My name is Jim Milam. You're in my shop in Sandy Springs, and you've probably never seen a shop like this anywhere else. It's in what used to be an attic. It's 40 feet in this direction and 20 feet in this direction. But I'm robbed of about 10, uh, uh, 5 feet on either side by these sloping walls, uh, which is the roof. So in effect, the shop is 40 this way and 10 feet this way. And as you can see, there are uh, walls on either end. Uh, they're the only vertical walls I have. So I've had to do a lot of improvising to overcome the, the uh, fact that I don't have any walls. So what basically I've done is a lot of drawers. Uh, a lot of drawers. And it's been an evolutionary process, so I want to I want to show you what I've done with the drawers. Over here I have a my wet sharpening station. Uh, this is an old cabinet, it has four drawers. Uh, I keep my my stones here, the Tormek is here, the Tormek accessories underneath there, and those four drawers. On the far end of the shop is the dry uh, uh, sharpening station. We'll, I'll, we'll look at that up close in a few minutes. Uh, over here is my router table. Uh, Norm Abram design. It has uh, four, eight, eleven drawers in it. And basically it just, it just has uh, tools for changing the, the uh, the parts, all the router bits are, are in these uh, foam rubber purchased uh, pads for bit storage. It's like 150 router bits, and they're over there behind you. If you can turn all the way around, you can see the, the uh, router bits in these uh, pads, somewhere around 150 of them. And up here, Forstner bits that are in a just a wood plywood so I, I got them sorted for size so you don't a, you don't damage them and B you can find what you're looking for in a reasonable amount of time. My chop saw is right here miter saw and it's on a rolling cabinet. Oh I failed to mention my dust collection is in the garage below us as is my air compressor. I did that initially because of room lack of space but it has had a couple of uh, positive uh, unintended consequences. One is the noise from both of those machines is not in here. It's, in a, it's, it's away from here, so it's, it's uh, not a problem. The, the dust collection is piped along this wall behind everything and along the wall over here behind everything. And it collects, it goes over the top up here and then down into the cyclone in the garage. It makes it, I don't have to haul stuff down the steps, I, the, all the dust, it's, it's collected down there. But with respect to the air compressor, the fact that it's 10 feet below where we're standing, I don't ever have any condensation in the, air, in the compressed air piping up here. Never had any water in it at all. And the gravity takes care of that. Now, what I have here is, is uh, A bank of drawers uh, going 10 feet either side of the miter saw and all kinds of uh, deep drawers for, for uh, sanders, uh, face shields and those large items and then a, a lot of uh, small drawers here with, with uh, various tools, nailers, uh, lots of clamps. This is, uh, this is, these are just wrenches uh, here. I like shallow drawers. You don't pile things on top of things when you have shallow drawers. You know, uh, uh, so metric and English, because all the tools now, have, some of them are metric, some of them are English, so you gotta have both. A uh, lot of files, lots of files. Uh, pin nailers, brad nailers. Uh, dial indicator and a bunch of clamps down here. I might as well mention the clamps now while, I'm, while we're talking about it. You can see uh, roughly from four and a half feet up, I got clamps everywhere. Uh, full length of the shop, 
uh, long clamps, up to eight feet long. Uh, the ones I use a lot of these parallel jaw, parallel jaw clamps right here, and these, uh, I use them a lot, so they're right here where, I, where they're most convenient. Uh, up here, probably in excess of 225 clamps in here. A great deal of them are hanging right up here. I can just, they're just at the right height where I can reach them. If it ever falls, it'll kill me. <coughs> uh, and then the few little clamps that are, won't fit up there are in the drawers over here and uh, some drawers over here. Veneer stored, uh, more veneer, uh, more veneer, uh, more veneer, and uh, finishing supplies in here. Uh, notice we got again we've got a the bottom row here three deep drawers and then everything else is relatively shallow uh, carving uh, samples uh, more carving samples and, and uh, gosh that drawer is heavy uh, bulky stuff there over here, I've got a lot, lot of nuts and bolts of all, all sorts of descriptions, descriptions and sizes. Uh, right here, I have an 11 drawer cabinet. There's nothing in here but carving tools, all different sizes. It's, I don't know, 175 or so carving tools in these 11 drawers right here. Over here, I've got all of my planes. Uh, The, the, it's just a piece of plywood that, that, is, that is sectioned off so that a, the tools don't, the planes don't bump into each other, and uh, and uh, and they're also where I can see them, find the one I want relatively quickly. Uh, down on this end is my my dry sharpening station. I have two bench grinders and a Sorby belt sander. Mainly, I use all of this for uh, sharpening of turning tools, uh, and the, the the bench grinder over here is for just general grinding of whatever I need to, because it has a, a, a regular stone on it. Now I've got uh, seven drawers in here that contain parts, uh, attachments. Uh, accessories for for the grinding here I want to keep the wet grinding and the dry grinding far apart at least 10 feet apart because each one will contaminate the other one uh, behind that is this cabinet for storing turning tools and it's hinged so that it, it holds Ten tools here and ten here, and there's eight or nine more on this side, and room for another ten above it. So there's room here for 40 turning tools, uh, and it and it doesn't want to stay open and it doesn't want to stay closed. It wants to hang halfway in between. Now the a lot of turning accessories on the shelf up here. Like uh, this is one of the few places, other than the ends. Of, of the long, the 40 foot ends, 40 foot apart. One of the few places, places I have anywhere where there's a vertical wall to put anything at all. Uh, there's a cabinet over here. If you, can you get to where you can see that? This has four drawers. I'll pull out a drawer and get out of the way. There's nothing in there but, but table saw blades. In that particular drawer, but everything in that four-drawer cabinet is in some way related to the table saw. Its, it's height is restricted uh, so that it's below the top of the table saw, so it doesn't interfere with whatever I might want to do there. Now, on the ends, on this end, I have 
over 50 of various sizes of plastic boxes, which are essentially drawers. Uh, they hold a lot of stuff. There's, you can rearrange them quite easily, put, put A on top of B or B on top of A, whatever suits you at the moment. Uh, there's a bank of bank of wooden drawers over here. These are uh, box joint wooden boxes that actually belong to my grandfather, and he's been dead 70, 70 years, so they're quite old. To, they last. Finishing supplies over here. Uh, everything you've seen so far has evolved, and I still didn't have the storage I needed for lots of things. So I came up with this cabinet, this part from here down. One sheet of plywood, eight feet long, four feet wide, made the top, the bottom, and the partitions between these drawers. There are 39 drawers in this bottom cabinet. And the deepest one is this, there, uh, there are three here that are deeper than, than the rest of them, but everything under the sun is in here and everything is labeled. My workbench is right over here. So th this, the stuff that I use most of the time, squares, marking knives, pens and pencils and such, they're all right here. So I can turn right around and it's available. And I really go out of my way to put things back where I got them. Otherwise, I could not function in here. You can see what a mess this is over here. I'm, I'm in the middle of a project right now making these, these boxes. But what I'm using is out here and I still have to put things away every couple of hours because it just, it just builds up if you don't do that. But after I built this, and you can see what I have in here. It's just all kinds of rulers, uh, squares, more squares. Uh, right here, tweezers, uh, awls, uh, picks, like dental pick things that I, I use that, those things a lot. Allen wrenches, pliers, all kinds of pliers. Sockets, uh, in incro rules. I got metric and, English, and the SAE uh, separate from each other. Again, I don't want to spend a lot of time looking, going back and forth trying to find the right size. Uh, ratchet wrenches, card scrapers, including the, the, the tools I need to sharpen and, and maintain the card scrapers. Dedicated drawer for that. Uh, vice grips. Uh, more files right here. Spoke shaves. Uh, drafting tools over here. Uh, inlay tools here. And then the, the, these two drawers here support the wet sharpening that's right over here beside it. Uh, and this, the table below it, which I mentioned earlier, it's, it's an old door, two, one on either side of the miter saw. It serves as an extension because it's at the proper elevation for the, uh, it's an extension of the miter saw. This wasn't even enough. I built this. This is a loose cabinet here that's only so this high, and this height was dictated by the, the wall back here. So it's not as deep as is the these. And incidentally, these are these are uh, three quarter extension drawer slides. But if you buy this drawer slide, that they're, they're the cheapest you can buy because they're only three quarter. They're not full extension. But if you get them too long it becomes full extension for a shorter drawer. So the drawer slide actually runs another four inches or so behind or beyond the back of this drawer. Some of them are wider than others and so forth. So over here I've got my, <coughs> my uh, cabinet making hand saws. Uh, again, no, no place to put them. I'd love to have a drawer for them. Uh, I bump my head on that a lot, so I'd love to have it in a drawer somewhere, but uh, they're made just with a homemade twist lock to keep them from falling off and then 
Of course, the, all this has to be designed for a particular saw, and you can, uh, uh, so you can't change them around. If there's, if there's one missing, you know it, and you know which one it is. And on the, on the far end, uh, I have the same kind of an arrangement for hand saws, uh, and I've got, I came across a new one not long ago, and I haven't hung it up here yet. Uh, need to extend it down. The point I want to make here is that I've got a total on these things. I've got 111 drawers in here, total. 57 stacking plastic boxes, plus 10, the, the 10 or 11 wooden boxes that really all of that acts, act the uh, function just like drawers would. And I have a number of these uh, Festool boxes that don't contain Festool stuff. They can, they're just Festool containers. They're, I started off uh, when I'd teach or, or uh, demonstrate anywhere, I'd, I'd use them for transport. And then when I'd come across some more, uh, I'd, uh, especially at uh, tool sales, I'd pick up an extra one or two. And uh, about half of them are full of Festool stuff and the other half of just storage. And they're all on wheels. This one's on top of the vacuum, and the other ones are on top of the, uh, of, uh, on a little float, a four-wheel float. Uh, over here to, in this direction is a lower roof, in which I have wood storage. It slides in and out. And my bandsaw here is positioned so that if I'm resawing something long, It'll roll right across this cabinet here, which is which is more storage, on the rollers, on two rollers, and go in there 10 feet or so, uh, maybe as wide as 12 or 14 inches, and I can just pull it back out. Now the, the clamp storage on the walls is not very efficient. You would never want to do this on vertical walls because it takes a lot of space for just a few clamps. Uh, I could put all of these clamps on a rolling rack and would occupy maybe th uh, three or four square feet on floor space, on wheels that I could turn around, get access to, take up a lot, lot, uh, uh, a great deal less space on a rolling rack than it would to hang them on a wall like this. But I didn't have any choice. I don't have floor space. I have, I have 12 on 12 uh, underside of roof space. So that's it. Welcome to Woodwisher Designs, AKA Tom Melcher's shop. This shop I added on to my house a couple of years ago, and it's been an ever evolving uh, shop with things changing constantly. Um, needless to say, in the last week or so, since I know I'd be doing this video on storage solutions, I've been feverishly working on storage solutions. So some of these are new, some of these are old. For example, my clamp storage. Uh, the clamp storage that I have, I love. It's made up of, uh, it's a closet storage system that I bought at Home Depot um, a number of years back. And it works so well because it's, it's very flexible and you can store a lot of clamps in a small amount of space. So in this six foot space here, I have over 150 clamps stored, and I could add a lot more. Um, that's because it's built on a uh, horizontal closet storage bar across the top, and then these standards that come down, you can space them at whatever space you need based upon the clamps that you own. <clears throat> so I have them spaced out, and then the clamps stack out from the wall and that's what gives you so much storage capability so um, uh, it's a wonderful system it's totally flexible I've reconfigured it several times and you can do your your parallel clamps your F style clamps over here um, all of your different types of clamps these are my aluminum bar clamps which are my favorites by the way and you can stack a bunch of them on there and I have room for more a lot of these are half empty. I can add more 
clamps if I needed to and come out from the wall and it wouldn't take up any more space. So um, it's ultimately flexible and it doesn't cost a whole lot of money. Um, if you want to make it yourself, you can go to Stumpy Nubs Woodworking and he just posted a video recently of this type of storage system but he handmade all of the wood racks. So this is highly recommended. A simple addition for dowel storage. If you want to know where to put your dowels, just take a PVC pipe, cut it off, screw it into the wall. Uh, over here, uh, this is a dust collector that uh, I'm using for my spindle sander and sand, a belt sander. And uh, it took up a lot of space. So what I did was stack them. I built a shelf here put the dust collector up above and the dust deputy down below. So it takes essentially half as much space. And because of the dust deputy, I very seldom have to change this bag, but if I needed to, I'd just go up there with a ladder. So that's a great solution for a dust collector. And over here we have uh, storage for a lot of my hand tools and small items. Uh, and that includes my workbench, which has drawers for saws and different kinds of hand tools. And over here, I built a workbench with 18 drawers, uh, varied in depth from deep at the bottom to narrow at the top, and that's worked out pretty good. So I can store uh, tools in here, hand tools and such. Uh, I'm still organizing it and getting it set up, but there's so many drawers that I've had to put labels on them with blue tape so I can find stuff. Otherwise, I found myself, I was constantly opening up drawers looking for one item and I could never find it until I got to the last drawer. So uh, they don't have drawer fronts on yet, um, but I'll add that at some point. Back here uh, are just drawers that are intended to have cabinet doors on them. I'm probably not going to do that. It's a great place to store things, uh, and, the, and the cabinet doors prevent you from seeing what's behind them. So I think I'll leave them just like they are, and uh, they're very, very functional. Uh, back in here, I've got some Festool equipment that I just pushed the, uh, uh, the storage cabinets back in there. So this works really well. Um, up here, I have sandpaper storage. And uh, I made this many, many years ago. I added this on here recently to keep my sanding blocks. And uh, up here is a very handy place to cut sandpaper. You just put it up on the line. I've got a hacksaw blade right here. You just rip it off and you have a new piece of sandpaper to put on your sanding block. So that works really, really well. Very handy. Um, up here I've got uh, carving chisels. I just screwed them to the wall. I made this little holder. And uh, this is where I do carving here by this window. So uh, uh, it's a great place to keep them handy. Uh, up here is a glue storage station. That's where I keep all my glue. I bought these at uh, uh, the container store. They're just shelves. There's one standard that goes up here and I uh, put these shelves on, you can buy them, and I just stack all of my glue stuff in there. It works really good. Um, this is a battery, battery charging station and uh, pegboard. Every shop has to have some pegboard, right? So uh, I've had this pegboard, I think I bought it at Home Depot a long time ago, and I'm still trying to figure out how to use it, but it's a great place uh, to put little racks up and pegs and, and to store all different kinds of tools. Uh, whatever the need may be. So over in this corner, I have a few more storage solutions, pretty simple. Uh, chisel storage, this is just a magnetic bar. It works great for steel chisels. It does not work so great for the new aluminum uh, easy wood chisels because uh, they don't stick to the magnet, but it's a good solution. Uh, over here is uh, my finishing cabinet. Uh, this is a really good storage solution. Um, I have all of my finishing supplies in one cabinet. Uh, shellacs, dye stains, wood stains, gel stains, top coats, uh, dyes, uh, spray stuff, mineral spirits, and everything is in this one cabinet pretty much. And um, 
uh, I uh, have this organized so it's dust free, it's out of the way, and it's easy to get to, and it's relatively safe, and it's all in one cabinet. So I really love that. Uh, over here uh, is my fasteners. Uh, okay, and in getting ready for this video, I charged my wife with organizing my fasteners. As a result, everything's organized, but I can't find a damn thing right now. I don't know which drawer it's in, but it's organized. So I, I think that was a pretty good solution. So uh, these are just different cabinets I've gotten. I mean, I, I remember seeing a guy who had like a wall of bins, 200 bins or more, where he had every bolt and nut categorized by thread and size and type. You know, that's just too crazy for me. This works good for me, and uh, whatever works for you is fine as well. Uh, anything's better than having a big box full of fasteners, and you can't find a doggone thing when you need it. So this system works pretty well. This is just a tray as I have extra screws and nuts and bolts. If I'm lazy and I don't want to put them, put them somewhere, I just throw them in here. And uh, hopefully my wife will organize them at a later date. Also, I want to point out one of the best organization tools in my entire shop. And that's the T111 siding I used uh, on the walls of my shop. This stuff is wonderful, simply because it's 5 a thick, it's hard, it's tough, and you can pound a nail in it wherever you want. You, don't, you never have to worry about finding a stud. So if you want to store something, you just pound a nail in it and hang it right up. So that's really, really convenient. Uh, up here is where uh, I have wood storage. Uh, I've got wood storage all over my shop, up high so it's out of the way uh, in unused space. I've got 10 foot ceilings in here so I can put wood racks across the top. Over here is where I store my veneers on this shelf up here. And keep in mind these were these are Bora wood racks. They're six shelves. They're too long and they extend into the window so I cut off two of the shelves and I use them elsewhere in my shop which I'll show you in a minute. Here's a good example of how you can use T111 for storage solutions. I can just pound in a nail, um, jigs and templates and different things from a table saw. I just pound in a nail and hang it up. Uh, my table saw sled uh, is big and I uh, need to get it out of the way and it was always in the way before. So what I came up with was a pulley system to where I can lower it whenever I need it. Like so. And I just disconnect it with carabiners. There's three of them. And when I'm done with it, I just hook the carabiners back up pull on the string and I tie it off. My saw, smaller sled I put over here, it's just simply on a hook so whenever I need it, uh, it's available to me. So every woodworker has to have a place for offcuts. Well my solution isn't perfect, uh, it's a good start. Um, I've got my planer on this old table I made a long time ago and I keep a lot of my stuff under here as far as offcuts, and I have them categorized by quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, random widths and sizes. And then on the bottom shelf, I've got shims, uh, clamping calls, and stickers. So uh, this is a great way to organize a lot of the small things. As far as offcuts, uh, you know, I generally just throw them underneath my, uh, my miter sled right here. And uh, I'm going to be building some more uh, offcut solutions here um, as I get time. Now, wood storage up here. Here's uh, another wood rack. Um, here's where I use one of those two shelf cutoffs from the Portimates. Um, and I mounted it up here. I've got another one back here for really short, you know, exotic types of woods. Uh, that works really good. And then back here is uh, uh, my main wood storage uh, against this wall. Uh, I got these uh, racks at Woodcraft and uh, they are rock solid. You could park a car on them if you wanted to. 
so uh, um, I keep all my uh, boards up here and then my plywood I put back in the corner and um, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great solution. I've got off cuts here and there's some uh, um, a, a crotch burl, cherry burl that I'm drawing right here. And uh, so this storage area here works really good for me. Whenever I do serious woodworking, um, probably my favorite storage solution is my shot paper. This thing is the bomb, okay? I think uh, depending upon how you work, if you're doing something specific for a period of time, keeping all your tools on you is the best way to go. So this is uh, very, very handy, and I wear it... Uh, whenever I do a series of woodworking. So that's it, that's my storage solutions. Um, I have lots of ideas on uh, more storage solutions. Uh, I just haven't uh, gotten them done yet. Uh, so uh, I wish you uh, the best of luck in coming up with some ideas. Hopefully this video will give you a few. All right, so I'm John Jones, this is my shop. I'm in Cumming, Georgia and I do all sorts of uh, woodworking and thanks for coming to my shop. I want to show you some of my storage solutions. All right, so first thing I want to show you is my version of, of a router uh, storage solution and I built this cabinet especially for router uh, support. So um, got several drawers here. I keep a tray that I made for different wrenches for the different um, uh, for the different routers and the lifts and, and so forth in there. Just keep it handy where I can reach it. Each of these drawers has various um, uh, router uh, bits or kits or uh, stops, this, that, and the other. Um, and uh, then for the large amount of bits that I've got, um, I did this, went to Home Depot or Lowe's or somewhere and bought um, a two inch or so uh, styrofoam insulation thing, cut it to size for here and then drilled holes uh, to store the router bits vertically in there. Uh, and this drawer here is just accessories, uh, guides and, and so forth in there. In this bigger bottom drawer, I've got a couple of three extra routers uh, that are not currently in use stored down here. And then I made this little uh, additional cabinet to sit in here and in it I store uh, the uh, plates for uh, the router table, uh, the extra pieces of fencing for the router table, uh, 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 blocks for uh, uh, measuring whether my bit's high enough or not too high, uh, bearings and so forth, and then uh, different uh, accessories here. On top I just put a little piece of, uh, of a kitchen uh, shelf um, thing to keep things from sliding around and I've got some uh, planes and so forth stored on, on top and uh, it's on wheels to move around easily even though it stays here um, uh, all the time. Uh, so that's my solution for a router uh, accessory storage with the obligatory uh, hot plate for my coffee cup. So the next thing I thought I would show would be a storage cabinet I made for some of my better uh, hand planes and uh, most of which are Lee Nielsen and so forth. So I found a plan, uh, I found a picture of a cabinet that uh, Chris Schwartz did probably 10 or 12 years ago, built my version of that and um, I'm storing anywhere from a number seven all the way down through several other um, uh, Lee Nielsen uh, planes. And I put a, um, I put a back on here uh, that I veneered with um, a curly ash uh, veneer and finished it uh, pretty good. I made, um, uh, I made saw kerf at an angle so that I could support the tools uh, with basically my version of an upside down French cleat uh, that goes like that, fits down in the uh, uh, groove and holds them. Um, 
and uh, uh, that's my uh, tool cabinet for finer planes. Probably took me five or six months to decide what I wanted to do about knobs on this cabinet to satisfy my odd sense of humor. And I had seen uh, little small hand planes at uh, Harbor Freight for years and thought they were useless and figured out that they weren't indeed useless, that they made really good cabinet handles for a, a real uh, hand plane storage cabinet. So that's my little uh, hand plane cabinet. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to show was the solution I came up with that fits my needs, maybe not everybody's needs, for a storage of sandpaper and sanding stuff as well as clamp storage. So on this side of this little rolling cabinet that I made, and it's on wheels, two of which swivel, two are fixed. Um, and on this side, uh, I put in little five or six inch uh, shelves uh, to put product on and put in the, uh, uh, put in the little um, uh, spacers for shelf supports here. And I've got all sorts of padded, um, fine sandpaper here to do things with. All this area here is different sandpaper grits for a random orbit uh, Festool sander. Um, and then down here I've got a couple of uh, two or three uh, extra stored uh, sanders. And believe it or not, one of my favorite sanders is a 45-year-old Craftsman uh, random sander uh, that does a quarter sheet of sandpaper and it is still a jewel. Then I've got clamps everywhere on this uh, rolling cabinet on both ends. Um, uh, I have uh, smaller um, clamps uh, right here and then as you turn the cabinet around without knocking it over hopefully turn the cabinet around on this side uh, are, uh, is uh, uh, totally clamp storage and then clamp storage on the end as you can see down there as well as uh, against the wall I used I think these are from uh, peach tree woodworking uh, and they store my pipe clamps and uh, Bessie clamps that are all heavy probably too much to be rolling on a on a narrow uh, base cabinet like this right here. So that's sanding and clamp storage. So this storage here is for my sanding, for my uh, sharpening station, um, uh, basically around my Tormac. And for years, uh, my Tormac was always in the way. I was moving it here, there, the other place, getting it out of the way to do something. And one day I decided I'm just gonna build a cabinet for it. I went to, uh, I think probably Home Depot and bought a little metal frame for a cabinet. And then I built drawers to go with it. Um, uh, m one of my neighbors uh, does a lot of kitchen um, remodeling. So uh, he found a piece of granite and gave it to me, uh, whatever size this is, which is a great flat surface for this. Um, I've got another granite stone here and one of the things I build a lot of boxes and uh, when I wind up with a box that uh, excuse me just a second when I wind up with a box that's not flat on the bottom I will move that these items out of the way and I'll put some strips of 120 um, uh, PSA sandpaper on here moving these things out of the way and I'll just take my boxes and run it across the 120 sandpaper uh, to level the box out and it works perfectly. Um, and um, I knew that my Tormac was green so I wanted to do something funky for the look of my cabinet and I took uh, curly maple veneer and dyed it uh, green, not a good match, but dyed it green anyway. Built some drawers for uh, accessories. Uh, for uh, the Tormac and then uh, sanding, uh, I mean uh, sharpening stones and so forth uh, for the other uh, half of this. So this is all sharpening 
even though I said sanding. So that's my sharpening station. This, I've, uh, uh, this is storage for small tools, uh, and I've just got two mechanics uh, tool storage cabinets uh, that I've adopted to my use uh, for like hammers, uh, hammers and mallets and stuff, Japanese hand saws, some electronics, uh, my Western hand saws, Japanese hand saws, bench chisels, et cetera, et cetera, like that. I find this really, really, really handy. Um, and um, of course, this also accommodates the obligatory golf ball that needs to be up here. Um, same thing over here. Uh, I've got this little El Cheapo, um, I think again, Harbor Freight uh, cabinet here that uh, I keep my uh, carving tools in. And I won't open that up and show you that, but um, that's what this is. And it works real well for me. So I felt like the, the space under my table saw table extension uh, was wasted so I built this cabinet here to go under it. In this cabinet uh, I've got two slide out shelves for blades and saw stop uh, 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 cartridges and, and so forth. And then this one down here uh, is uh, mortising uh, attachments, tenon attachments I should have said, and extra uh, sleds for the fence. And then I put a drawer here uh, for extra junk and little accessories and alignment stuff. All right, so uh, this is uh, my lumber and wood, part of my lumber and wood storage solution. Um, and uh, I've never, before having this shop, I've never had enough space to store my lumber vertically. I've always stored it horizontally. It's always been in a small space. I always need the board that's on the bottom that's going to fall. The others are going to fall on my head and so forth. So I was bound and determined if I could to store my wood uh, vertically. I put uh, pallets down to keep them off of the concrete floor. And uh, I've got uh, little uh, tracks, uh, track um, shelving tracks here to put in separators to group it, not have them all leaning against each other all the way down the line. Um, I think you get less warpage and bowing and bending and blah, blah, blah if you store your wood vertically, but everybody doesn't have the ability to store vertically, especially uh, longer boards. And I've got some 12 footers here that um, uh, I think work very well. Um, and then I've got some other extra stuff that I don't have enough racks on the, the uh, wall to store and it's just leaning up against this wall. Probably the highlight of my entire shop is the sophisticated bandsaw blade storage device that I designed personally. I've applied for a patent and um, this is my bandsaw storage, storage solution that I'm so incredibly proud of. So this segment is to talk about what I do about shorts. And um, uh, as probably everybody does, I, I wind up with a lot of shorts. I wind up accumulating stuff I buy from people, different shops, cutoffs, and so forth. So um, what I've done is organized them. And to keep from making a new mess out of an old mess, I've got them kind of halfway organized. And I've got them la labeled on the end. Um, with uh, the common names of all of the wood from spalted maple to mahogany to myrtle wood, holly, uh, Bolivian coffee, etc. And uh, lots of um, uh, heart pine and so forth like that. Um, and especially interesting is a rare wood that I have right here that I've labeled Jet Lathe, which is some kind of uh, South American hardwood that I don't know the name of it, but it was what the lathe was bolted to when it was shipped from the factory. So if you look it up in an official book, you'll find Jet Lathe as a very dense hardwood. Also, um, through the years, I've wound up having extra dowels and stuff like that. So. I've just used trash cans to store upright uh, dowels 
and then a uh, little paint bucket to store smaller dowel, excess smaller dowels and stuff like that. So that's my shorts uh, storage. And then over here uh, is where I store um, <clears throat> where I store uh, wood that I turn into bowls and vases and vessels and stuff like that. So, um, you know, when stuff's given to you, you take it and store it and then use it when you can. <laughs>